welcome to official DVSA, Driving Theory Test, 2022 updated, UK. Question 1. Where would you expect to see these markers? Give one answer. A. On a diversion sign. B. On a large goods vehicle. C. On a motorway sign. D. On a railway bridge. The correct answer is B. On a large goods vehicle. Explanation. These markers must be fitted to vehicles over 13 meters long, large goods vehicles, and rubbish skips placed in the road. They're reflective to make them easier to see in the dark. Question 2. What's the main hazard shown in this picture? Give one answer. A. Parked cars around the corner. B. The cyclist crossing the road. C. Vehicles doing U-turns. D. Vehicles turning right. The correct answer is B. The cyclist crossing the road. Explanation, look at the picture carefully and try to imagine you're there. The cyclist in this picture appears to be trying to cross the road. You must be able to deal with the unexpected, especially when you're approaching a hazardous junction. Look well ahead to give yourself time to deal with any hazards. Question 3. Which road user has caused a hazard? Give one answer. A. The car turning, arrow D. B. The moving car, arrow C. C. The parked car, arrow A. D. The pedestrian waiting to cross, arrow B. The correct answer is C. The parked car, arrow A. Explanation, the car arrow A is parked within the area marked by zigzag lines at the pedestrian crossing. Parking here is illegal. It also, blocks the view for pedestrians wishing to cross the road, restricts the view of the crossing for approaching traffic. Question 4. What should the driver of the car approaching the crossing do? Give one answer. A. Continue at the same speed. B. Drive through quickly. C. Slow down and get ready to stop. D. Sound the horn. The correct answer is C. Slow down and get ready to stop. Explanation. Look well ahead to see whether any hazards are developing. This will give you more time to deal with them in the correct way. The man in the picture is clearly intending to cross the road. You should be traveling at a speed that allows you to check your mirror, slow down and stop in good time. You shouldn't have to brake harshly. Question 5. What should the driver of the gray car, arrowed be especially aware of? Give one answer. A. Doors opening on parked cars. B. Empty parking spaces. C. The uneven road surface. D. Traffic following behind. The correct answer is A. Doors opening on parked cars. Explanation. When passing parked cars, there's a risk that a driver or passenger may not check before opening the door into the road. A defensive driver will drive slowly and be looking for people who may be about to get out of their car. Question 6. You see the sign ahead. What should you expect? Give one answer. A. The road will bend sharply to the left. B. The road will bend sharply to the right. C. The road will go steeply downhill. D. The road will go steeply uphill. The correct answer is A. The road will bend sharply to the left. Explanation. This sign indicates that the road will bend sharply to the left. Slow down in plenty of time and select the correct gear before you start to turn. Braking hard and late, while also sharply changing direction, is likely to cause a skid. Question 7. You're approaching the cyclist. What should you do? 
Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights at the cyclist. B. Overtake before the cyclist gets to the junction. C. Overtake the cyclist on the left-hand side. D. Slow down and allow the cyclist to turn. The correct answer is D. Slow down and allow the cyclist to turn. Explanation. Keep well back and give the cyclist time and room to turn safely. Don't intimidate them by getting too close or trying to squeeze past. Question 8. Why must you take extra care when turning right at this junction? Give one answer. A. The footpaths are narrow. B. The road markings are faint. C. The road surface is poor. D. The view is restricted. The correct answer is D. The view is restricted. Explanation, you may have to pull forward slowly until you can see up and down the road. Be aware that the traffic approaching the junction can't see you either. If you don't know that it's clear, don't go. Question 9. Which type of vehicle should you be ready to give way to as you approach this bridge? Give one answer. A. Bicycles. B. Buses. C. Cars. D. Motorcycles. The correct answer is B. Buses. Explanation. A double-deck bus or high-sided lorry will have to take a position in the center of the road to clear the bridge. There's normally a sign to show this. Look well ahead, pass the bridge and be ready to stop and give way to large oncoming vehicles. Question 10. What type of vehicle could you expect to meet in the middle of the road? Give one answer. A. Bicycle. B. Car. C. Lorry. D. Motorcycle. The correct answer is C, lorry. Explanation, the highest point of the bridge is in the center, so a large vehicle might have to move to the center of the road to have enough room to pass under the bridge. Question 11. What must you do at this junction? Give one answer. A. Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. B. Stop beyond the line, at a point where you can see clearly. C. Stop only if there's traffic on the main road. D. Stop only if you're turning right. The correct answer is A. Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. Explanation. The stop sign has been put here because the view into the main road is poor. You must stop because it won't be possible to take proper observation while you're moving. Question 12. A driver pulls out of a side road in front of you, causing you to brake hard. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Flash your lights to show your annoyance. B. Ignore the error and stay calm. C. Overtake as soon as possible. D. Sound your horn to show your annoyance. The correct answer is B. Ignore the error and stay calm. Explanation. Be tolerant if a vehicle emerges and you have to brake quickly. Anyone can make a mistake, so don't react aggressively. Be alert where there are side roads and be especially careful where there are parked vehicles, because these can make it difficult for emerging drivers to see you. Question 13. How would age affect an elderly person's driving ability? Give one answer. A. They won't be able to obtain car insurance. B. They won't signal at junctions. C. They'll need glasses to read road signs. D. They'll take longer to react to hazards. The correct answer is D. They'll take longer to react to hazards. Explanation, be tolerant of older drivers. They may take longer to react to a hazard and they may be hesitant in some situations, for example, at a junction. 
Question 14. You've just passed these warning lights. What hazard would you expect to see next? Give one answer. A. A level crossing with no barrier. B. A school crossing patrol. C. An ambulance station. D. An opening bridge. The correct answer is B. A school crossing patrol. Explanation, these lights warn that children may be crossing the road to a nearby school. Slow down so that you're ready to stop if necessary. Question 15. You're planning a long journey. Do you need to plan rest stops? Give one answer. A. No, only fuel stops will be needed. B. No, you'll be less tired if you get there as soon as possible. C. Yes, regular stops help concentration. D. Yes, you should plan to stop every half an hour. The correct answer is C. Yes, regular stops help concentration. Explanation, try to plan your journey so that you can take rest stops. It's recommended that you take a break of at least 15 minutes after every two hours of driving or riding. This should help to maintain your concentration. Question 16. The red lights are flashing. What should you do when approaching this level crossing? Give one answer. A. Go through carefully. B. Go through quickly. C. Stop before the barrier. D. Switch on hazard warning lights. The correct answer is C. Stop before the barrier. Explanation, at level crossings, the red lights flash before and while the barrier is down. At most crossings, an amber light will precede the red lights. You must stop behind the white line unless you've already crossed it when the amber light comes on. Never zigzag around half barriers. Question 17. You're approaching a crossroads. The traffic lights have failed. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Be prepared to brake sharply to a stop. B. Be prepared to stop for any traffic. C. Brake and stop only for large vehicles. D. Brake sharply to a stop before looking. The correct answer is B. Be prepared to stop for any traffic. Explanation, when approaching a junction where the traffic lights have failed, you should proceed with caution. Treat the situation as an unmarked junction and be prepared to stop. Question 18. What should the driver of the red car arrow do? Give one answer. A. Quickly drive behind the pedestrian in the road. B. Tell the pedestrian in the road she shouldn't have crossed. C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. D. Wave towards the pedestrians who are waiting to cross. The correct answer is C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. Explanation. Some people might take a long time to cross the road. They may be older or have a disability. Be patient and don't hurry them by showing your impatience. If pedestrians are standing at the side of the road, don't signal or wave them to cross. Other road users might not have seen your signal and this could lead the pedestrians into a hazardous situation. Question 19. You're following a slower moving vehicle on a narrow country road. There's a junction just ahead on the right. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Accelerate quickly to pass before the junction. B. Only consider overtaking when you're past the junction. C. Overtake after checking your mirrors and signaling. D. Slow down and prepare to overtake on the left. The correct answer is B. Only consider overtaking when you're past the junction. Explanation, you should never overtake as you approach a junction. If a vehicle emerged from the junction while you were overtaking, 
a dangerous situation could develop very quickly. Question 20. What should you do as you approach this overhead bridge? Give one answer. A. Be prepared to give way to large vehicles in the middle of the road. B. Find another route, this one is only for high vehicles. C. Move across to the right-hand side before going through. D. Move out to the center of the road before going through. The correct answer is A. Be prepared to give way to large vehicles in the middle of the road. Explanation. Oncoming large vehicles may need to move to the middle of the road to pass safely under the bridge. There won't be enough room for you to continue, so you should be ready to stop and wait. Question 21. Why are mirrors often slightly curved, convex? Give one answer. A. They give a wider field of vision. B. They make following traffic look bigger. C. They make it easier to judge the speed of following traffic. D. They totally cover blind spots. The correct answer is A. They give a wider field of vision. Explanation, although a convex mirror gives a wide view of the scene behind, you should be aware that it won't show you everything behind or to the side of your vehicle. Before you move off, you'll need to look over your shoulder to check for anything not visible in the mirrors. Question 22. A slow-moving lorry showing this sign is traveling in the middle lane of a three-lane motorway. How should you pass it? Give one answer. A. Approach with care and pass on the left of the lorry. B. Cautiously approach the lorry, then pass on either side. C. Don't pass the lorry and leave the motorway at the next exit. D. Use the right-hand lane and pass the lorry normally. The correct answer is A. Approach with care and pass on the left of the lorry. Explanation. This sign is found on slow-moving or stationary works vehicles. If you wish to overtake, do so on the left, as indicated. Be aware that there might be workmen in the area. Question 23. You think the driver of the vehicle in front has forgotten to cancel their right indicator. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Flash your lights to alert the driver. B. Overtake on the left if there's room. C. Sound your horn before overtaking. D. Stay behind and don't overtake. The correct answer is D. Stay behind and don't overtake. Explanation. Be cautious and don't attempt to overtake. The driver may be unsure of the location of a junction and may turn suddenly. Question 24. What's the main hazard the driver of the red car, arrowed, should be aware of? Give one answer. A. Glare from the sun may affect the driver's vision. B. Oncoming vehicles will assume the driver is turning right. C. The black car may stop suddenly. D. The bus may move out into the road. The correct answer is D. The bus may move out into the road. Explanation, if you can do so safely, give way to buses signaling to move off at bus stops. Try to anticipate the actions of other road users around you. The driver of the red car should be prepared for the bus pulling out. As you approach a bus stop, look to see how many passengers are waiting to board. If the last one has just got on, the bus is likely to move off. Question 25. What type of vehicle displays this yellow sign? Give one answer. A. A broken down vehicle. B. A private ambulance. C. A school bus. D. An ice cream van. The correct answer is C. A school bus. Explanation. Buses which carry children to and from school may stop at places other than scheduled bus stops. 
be aware that they might pull over at any time to allow children to get on, or off. This will normally be when traffic is heavy during rush hour. Question 26. What hazard should you be aware of when traveling along this street? Give one answer. A. Children running out between vehicles. B. Glare from the sun. C. Lack of road markings. D. Large goods vehicles. The correct answer is A. Children running out between vehicles. Explanation, on roads where there are many parked vehicles, you might not be able to see children between parked cars and they may run out into the road without looking. Question 27. What's the main hazard you should be aware of when following this cyclist? Give one answer. A. The contents of the cyclist's carrier may fall onto the road. B. The cyclist may move to the left and dismount. C. The cyclist may swerve into the road. D. The cyclist may wish to turn right at the end of the road. The correct answer is C. The cyclist may swerve into the road. Explanation, when following a cyclist, be aware that they have to deal with the hazards around them. They may wobble or swerve to avoid a pothole in the road or see a potential hazard and change direction suddenly. Don't follow them too closely or rev your engine impatiently. Question 28. A driver's behavior has upset you. What can you do to safely get over this incident? Give one answer. A. Follow them, flashing your headlights. B. Gesture to them with your hand. C. Shout abusive language. D. Stop and take a break. The correct answer is D. Stop and take a break. Explanation. If you feel yourself becoming tense or upset, stop in a safe place and take a break. Tiredness can make things worse and may cause a different reaction to upsetting situations. Question 29. How should you drive in areas with traffic calming measures? Give one answer. A. At a reduced speed. B. At the speed limit. C. In the center of the road. D. With headlights on dipped beam. The correct answer is A. At a reduced speed. Explanation, traffic calming measures such as road humps, chicanes and narrowings are intended to slow drivers down to protect vulnerable road users. Don't speed up until you reach the end of the traffic calm zone. Question 30. When approaching this hazard, why should you slow down? Give one answer. A. Because it's hard to see to the right. B. Because of animals crossing. C. Because of approaching traffic. D. Because of the level crossing. The correct answer is D. Because of the level crossing. Explanation. You should be slowing down and selecting the correct gear in case you have to stop at the level crossing. Look for the signals and be prepared to stop if necessary. Question 31. Why are place names painted on the road surface? Give one answer. A. To enable you to change lanes early. B. To prevent you changing lanes. C. To restrict the flow of traffic. D. To warn you of oncoming traffic. The correct answer is A. To enable you to change lanes early. Explanation. The names of towns and cities may be painted on the road at busy junctions and complex road systems, their purpose is to let you move into the correct lane in good time, allowing traffic to flow more freely. Question 32. Some two-way roads are divided into three lanes. Why are these particularly dangerous? Give one answer. A. Traffic can overtake on the left. B. Traffic can travel faster in poor weather conditions. C. 
traffic in both directions can use the middle lane to overtake. D. Traffic uses the middle lane for emergencies only. The correct answer is C. Traffic in both directions can use the middle lane to overtake. Explanation If you intend to overtake, you must consider that approaching traffic could be planning the same maneuver. When you've considered the situation and decided it's safe, indicate your intentions early. This will show the approaching traffic that you intend to pull out. Question 33 You're on a dual carriageway. Ahead, you see a vehicle with an amber flashing light. What could this be? Give one answer. A. A disabled person's vehicle. B. A doctor on call. C. A fire engine. D. An ambulance. The correct answer is A. A disabled person's vehicle. Explanation. An amber flashing light on a vehicle indicates that it's slow moving. Battery powered vehicles used by disabled people are limited to 8 miles per hour. It isn't advisable for them to be used on dual carriageways where the speed limit exceeds 50 miles per hour. If they are, then an amber flashing light must be used. Question 34 What does this signal from a police officer mean to oncoming traffic? Give one answer. A. Go ahead. B. Stop. C. Turn left. D. Turn right. The correct answer is B. Stop. Explanation. Police officers may need to direct traffic, for example, at a junction where the traffic lights have broken down. Check your copy of the highway code for the signals that they use. Question 35. Why should you be cautious when going past this stationary bus? Give one answer. A. People may cross the road in front of it. B. The driver may open the door. C. The road surface will be slippery. D. There is traffic approaching in the distance. The correct answer is A. People may cross the road in front of it. Explanation. A stationary bus at a bus stop can hide pedestrians who might try to cross the road just in front of it. Drive at a speed that will enable you to respond safely if you have to. Question 36. Where shouldn't you overtake? Give one answer. A. Approaching a junction. B. On a one-way street. C. On a single carriageway. D. Traveling up a long hill. The correct answer is A. Approaching a junction. Explanation. You should overtake only when it's really necessary and you can see it's clear ahead. Look out for road signs and markings that show it's illegal or would be unsafe to overtake, for example, approaching junctions or bends. In many cases, overtaking is unlikely to significantly improve your journey time. Question 37. What's an effect of drinking alcohol? Give one answer. A. A loss of confidence. B. Faster reactions. C. Greater awareness of danger. D. Poor judgment of speed. The correct answer is D, poor judgment of speed. Explanation, alcohol will severely reduce your ability to drive or ride safely and there are serious consequences, if you're caught over the drink drive limit. It's known that alcohol can affect your judgment cause overconfidence, reduced coordination and control. Question 38. What does the solid white line at the side of the road indicate? Give one answer. A. Cycle path. B. Edge of the carriageway. C. Footpath on the left. D. Traffic lights ahead. The correct answer is B. Edge of the carriageway. Explanation. The continuous white line shows the edge of the carriageway. 
It can be especially useful when visibility is restricted, such as at night or in bad weather. It's discontinued in some places, for example, at junctions, laybys, entrances or other openings. Question 39. You're driving towards this level crossing. What would be the first warning of an approaching train? Give one answer. A. A steady amber light. B. Both half barriers down. C. One half barrier down. D. Twin flashing red lights. The correct answer is A. A steady amber light. Explanation. The steady amber light will be followed by twin flashing red lights that mean you must stop. An alarm will also sound to alert you to the fact that a train is approaching. Question 40. You're behind this cyclist. When the traffic lights change, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Allow the cyclist time and room. B. Tap your horn and drive through first. C. Try to move off before the cyclist. D. Turn right but give the cyclist room. The correct answer is A. Allow the cyclist time and room. Explanation. Hold back and allow the cyclist to move off. Some junctions have special areas marked across the front of the traffic lane. These allow cyclists to wait for the lights to change and move off ahead of other traffic. Question 41. What should the white car do when the traffic lights change to green? Give one answer. A. Move off quickly and turn in front of the cyclist. B. Move up close to the cyclist to beat the lights. C. Sound their horn to warn the cyclist. D. Wait for the cyclist to pull away. The correct answer is D. Wait for the cyclist to pull away. Explanation. If you're waiting at traffic lights, check all around you before you move away, as cyclists often filter through waiting traffic. Allow the cyclist to move off safely. Question 42. You intend to turn left at the traffic lights. What should you do just before turning? Give one answer. A. Check for bicycles on your left. B. Check your right mirror. C. Move up close to the white car. D. Straddle the lanes. The correct answer is A. Check for bicycles on your left. Explanation, check your near side for cyclists before moving away. This is especially important if you've been in a queue of traffic and are about to move off, as cyclists often filter past on the near side of stationary vehicles. Question 43. Why should you reduce your speed when driving along this road? Give one answer. A. A low bridge is ahead. B. A stagger junction is ahead. C. The road narrows ahead. D. The road surface changes ahead. The correct answer is B. A stagger junction is ahead. Explanation. Traffic could be turning off or pulling out ahead of you, to the left or right. Vehicles turning left will be slowing down before the junction, and any vehicles turning right may have to stop to allow oncoming traffic to clear. Be prepared for this, as you might have to slow down or stop behind them. Question 44. What might you expect to happen in this situation? Give one answer. A. Traffic speed will increase. B. Traffic will move into the left-hand lane. C. Traffic will move into the right-hand lane. D. Traffic won't need to change position. The correct answer is B. Traffic will move into the left-hand lane. Explanation. Be courteous and allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. Question 45. You're driving on a road with several lanes. You see these signs above the lanes. What do they mean? Give one answer. A. The two left lanes are open. 
B. The two right lanes are open. C. Traffic in the left lanes should stop. D. Traffic in the right lanes should stop. The correct answer is A, the two left lanes are open. Explanation, if you see a red cross above your lane, it means that there's an obstruction ahead. You'll have to move into one of the lanes that's showing a green light. If all the lanes are showing a red cross, then you must stop. Question 46. You're invited to a pub lunch. You know that you'll have to drive in the evening. What's your best course of action? Give one answer. A. Avoid mixing your alcoholic drinks. B. Don't drink any alcohol at all. C. Eat a hot meal with your alcoholic drinks. D. Have some milk before drinking alcohol. The correct answer is B. Don't drink any alcohol at all. Explanation. Alcohol will stay in your body for several hours and may make you unfit to drive later in the day. Drinking during the day will also affect your performance at work or study. Question 47. You've been convicted of driving while unfit through drink or drugs. You'll find this is likely to cause the cost of one of the following to rise considerably. Which one? Give one answer. A. Driving license. B. Insurance premiums. C. Road fund license. D. Vehicle test certificate. The correct answer is B. Insurance premiums. Explanation. You've shown that you're a risk to yourself and others on the road. For this reason, insurance companies may charge you a higher premium. Question 48. What advice should you give to a driver who has had a few alcoholic drinks at a party? Give one answer. A. Drive home carefully and slowly. B. Go home by public transport. C. Have a strong cup of coffee and then drive home. D. Wait a short while and then drive home. The correct answer is B. Go home by public transport. Explanation, drinking black coffee or waiting a few hours won't make any difference. Alcohol takes time to leave the body. A driver who has been drinking should go home by public transport or taxi. They might even be unfit to drive the following morning. Question 49. You've been taking medicine that causes drowsiness. You begin to feel better, but you still need to take the medicine. What should you do about driving? Give one answer. A. Ask someone to come with you. B. Avoid driving and check with your doctor. C. Drive on quiet roads. D. Only drive if your journey is necessary. The correct answer is B. Avoid driving and check with your doctor. Explanation. You aren't fit to drive if you're taking medicine that makes you drowsy. Check with your doctor if you're unsure. You mustn't put other road users, your passengers, or yourself at risk. Question 50. You're about to drive home from holiday when you become ill. A doctor prescribes drugs that are likely to affect your driving. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Avoid driving on motorways. B. Get someone else to drive. C. Never drive at more than 30 miles per hour. D. Only drive if someone is with you. The correct answer is B. Get someone else to drive. Explanation. You shouldn't drive if you're taking medicine that could cause you to feel drowsy at the wheel. Ask someone else to drive or... If that isn't possible, find another way to get home. Question 51. During periods of illness, your ability to drive may be impaired. What must you do? Give one answer. A. Make sure you're medically fit to drive. B. See your doctor each time before you drive. 
C. Take all your medicines with you when you drive. D. Take smaller doses of any medicines. The correct answer is A. Make sure you're medically fit to drive. Explanation, only drive if you're fit to do so. Driving when you're ill or taking some medicines can affect your concentration and judgment. It may also cause you to become drowsy or even fall asleep. Question 52. What should you do if you begin to feel drowsy while you're driving? Give one answer. A. Close the car windows to help you concentrate. B. Continue with your journey but drive more slowly. C. Stop and rest as soon as possible. D. Turn the heater up to keep you warm and comfortable. The correct answer is C. Stop and rest as soon as possible. Explanation. You'll be putting other road users at risk if you continue to drive when you're drowsy. Pull over and stop in a safe place for a rest. Caffeinated drinks and a short nap can temporarily help counter sleepiness. If you're driving a long distance, think about finding some accommodation so you can rest for longer before continuing your journey. Question 53. What should you do if you become tired while you're driving on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Close all your windows and set the heating to warm. B. Increase your speed and turn up the radio volume. C. Leave the motorway at the next exit and rest. D. Pull up on the hard shoulder and change drivers. The correct answer is C. Leave the motorway at the next exit and rest. Explanation. If you feel yourself becoming tired or sleepy, you should leave the motorway at the next exit or services and stop for a rest. If you have to drive a long way, leave earlier and plan your journey to include rest stops. That way, you're less likely to become tired while driving and you'll still arrive in good time. Question 54. You're about to drive home. You feel very tired and have a severe headache. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Drive home if you can stay awake for the journey. B. Drive home, but take a tablet for headaches. C. Wait for a short time, then drive home slowly. D. Wait until you're fit and well before driving. The correct answer is D. Wait until you're fit and well before driving. Explanation. All of your concentration should be on your driving. Any pain you feel will distract you, and you should avoid driving when drowsy. The safest course of action is to wait until you've rested and are feeling better before starting your journey. Question 55. You're driving on a long journey. What can you do to help prevent tiredness? Give one answer. A. Complete the journey without stopping. B. Eat a large, meal before driving. C. Play loud music in the car. D. Take regular refreshment breaks. The correct answer is D. Take regular refreshment breaks. Explanation. Long distance driving can be boring. This, coupled with a stuffy, warm vehicle, can make you feel tired and sleepy. Make sure you take rest breaks to help you stay awake and alert. Stop in a safe place before you get to the stage of fighting sleep. Question 56. You take some cough medicine given to you by a friend. What should you do before driving? Give one answer. A. Ask your friend if taking the medicine affected their driving. B. Check the label to see if the medicine will affect your driving. C. Drink some strong coffee one hour before driving. D. Drive a short distance to see if the medicine is affecting your driving. The correct answer is B. Check the label to see if the medicine will affect your driving. Explanation. If you've taken medicine, never drive without first checking what the side effects might be. They might affect your judgment and perception, 
and therefore endanger lives? Question 57. You take the wrong route and find you're on a one-way street. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Continue to the end of the road. B. Reverse into a driveway. C. Reverse out of the road. D. Turn around in a side road. The correct answer is A. Continue to the end of the road. Explanation. Never reverse or turn your vehicle around in a one-way street. It's illegal and could even cause a collision. If you've taken a wrong turn, carry on along the one-way street and find another route, checking the direction signs as you drive. Stop in a safe place if you need to check a map. Question 58. What will be a serious distraction from driving? Give one answer. A. Looking at road maps. B. Looking in your door mirror. C. Switching on your demi stir. D. Using your windscreen washers. The correct answer is A. Looking at road maps. Explanation Looking at road maps while driving is very dangerous. If you aren't sure of your route, stop in a safe place and check the map. You must not allow anything to take your attention away from the road while you're driving. Question 59. You're driving along this road. The driver on the left is reversing from a driveway. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Drive through as you have priority. B. Move to the opposite side of the road. C. Sound your horn and be prepared to stop. D. Speed up and drive through quickly. The correct answer is C. Sound your horn and be prepared to stop. Explanation. White lights at the rear of a car, show that the driver has selected reverse gear. Sound your horn to warn the other driver of your presence, and reduce your speed as a precaution. Question 60. You've been involved in an argument that has made you feel angry. What should you do before starting your journey? Give one answer. A. Calm down. B. Have an alcoholic drink. C. Open a window. D. Turn on your radio. The correct answer is A. Calm down. Explanation. If you're feeling upset or angry, you'll find it much more difficult to concentrate on your driving. You should wait until you've calmed down before starting a journey. Question 61. You're driving on this dual carriageway. Why may you need to slow down? Give one answer. A. There are no footpaths. B. There are roadworks ahead of you. C. There are solid white lines on either side. D. There's a broken white line in the center. The correct answer is B. There are roadworks ahead of you. Explanation. Look well ahead and read any road signs as you drive. They are there to inform you of what's ahead. In this case, you may need to slow down and change direction. Check your mirrors so you know what's happening around you before you change speed or direction. Question 62. You've just been overtaken by this motorcyclist, who has cut in sharply. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Brake firmly. B. Flash your lights. C. Keep a safe gap. D. Sound a horn. The correct answer is C. Keep a safe gap. Explanation. If another vehicle cuts in sharply, ease off the accelerator and drop back to allow a safe separation distance. Try not to overreact by braking sharply or swerving, as you could lose control. If vehicles behind you are too close or unprepared, it could lead to a crash. Question 63. You're about to drive home. You can't find the glasses you need to wear. What should you do? Give one answer. A. 
borrow a friend's glasses and use those. b. Drive home at night, so that the lights will help you. c. Drive home slowly, keeping to quiet roads. d. Find a way of getting home without driving. The correct answer is d. Find a way of getting home without driving. Explanation, if you need to wear glasses for driving, it's illegal to drive without them. You must be able to see clearly when you are driving. Question 64. What's a common effect of drinking alcohol? Give one answer. A. Color blindness. B. Faster reactions. C. Increased concentration. D. Increased confidence. The correct answer is D. Increased confidence. Explanation. Alcohol can increase confidence to a point where a driver's behavior might become out of character. Someone who normally behaves sensibly might suddenly enjoy taking risks. Never let yourself or your friends get into this situation. Question 65. Your doctor has given you a course of medicine. Why should you ask how it will affect you? Give one answer. A. Drugs make you a better driver by quickening your reactions. B. Some types of medicine can cause your reactions to slow down. C. The medicine you take may affect your hearing. D. You'll have to let your insurance company know about the medicine. The correct answer is B. Some types of medicine can cause your reactions to slow down. Explanation. Always check the label or information leaflet for any medication you take. The medicine might affect your driving. If you aren't sure, ask your doctor or pharmacist. Question 66. You find that you need glasses to read vehicle number plates at the required distance. When must you wear them? Give one answer. A. At all times when driving. B. Only in bad light or at night time. C. Only in bad weather conditions. D. Only when you think it's necessary. The correct answer is A. At all times when driving. Explanation. Have your eyesight tested before you start your practical training. Then, throughout your driving life, have checks periodically, as your vision may change. Question 67. Which of the following types of glasses shouldn't be worn when driving at night? Give one answer. A. Bifocal. B. Half moon. C. Round. D. Tinted. The correct answer is D. Tinted. Explanation. If you're driving at night or in poor visibility, Tinted lenses will reduce the efficiency of your vision by reducing the amount of light reaching your eyes. Question 68. What can seriously affect your ability to concentrate? Give one answer. A. Busy roads. B. Contact lenses. C. Drugs. D. Tinted windows. The correct answer is C. Drugs. Explanation, both recreational drugs and prescribed medicine can affect your concentration. It's also now an offense to drive with certain drugs in your body and a positive test could lead to a conviction. Question 69. You find that your eyesight has become very poor and your optician cannot help you. By law, who should you tell? Give one answer. A. Another optician. B. The driver licensing authority. C. The local police. D. Your own doctor. The correct answer is B. The driver licensing authority. Explanation. Having very poor eyesight will have a serious effect on your ability to drive safely. If you can't meet the driver's eyesight requirements, you must tell DVLA or DVA in Northern Ireland. Question 70. When should you use hazard warning lights, 
Give one answer. A. When warning oncoming traffic that you intend to stop. B. When you're double parked on a two-way road. C. When your direction indicators aren't working. D. When your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. The correct answer is D. When your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Explanation. Hazard warning lights are an important safety feature and should be used if you've broken down and are causing an obstruction. Don't use them as an excuse to park illegally. You may also use them on motorways to warn traffic behind you of danger ahead. Question 71. You want to turn left at this junction. Your view of the main road is restricted. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Approach slowly and edge out until you can see more clearly. B. Build up your speed so that you can emerge quickly. C. Stay well back and wait to see if anything comes. D. Stop and apply the handbrake even if the road is clear. The correct answer is A. Approach slowly and edge out until you can see more clearly. Explanation. You should slow right down, and stop if necessary, at any junction where your view is restricted, edge forward until you can see properly. Only then can you decide whether it's safe to go. Question 72. When driving a car fitted with automatic transmission, what would you use kick down for? Give one answer. A. Cruise control. B. Fuel economy. C. Quick acceleration. D. Slow braking. The correct answer is C. Quick acceleration. Explanation. Kick down selects a lower gear, enabling the vehicle to accelerate faster. Question 73. You're driving along this motorway. It's raining. What should you do when following this lorry? Give one answer. A. Allow at least a two-second gap. B. Be aware of spray reducing your vision. C. Move left and drive on the hard shoulder. D. Move right and stay in the right-hand lane. The correct answer is B. Be aware of spray reducing your vision. Explanation. The usual two-second time gap increases to four seconds when the roads are wet. If you stay well back, you'll be able to see past the vehicle, be out of the spray thrown up by the lorry's tires, give yourself more time to stop if the need arises, increase your chances of being seen by the lorry driver. Question 74. You're driving towards this left-hand bend. What dangers should you be aware of? Give one answer. A. A vehicle overtaking you. B. No sign to warn you of the bend. C. No white lines in the center of the road. D. Pedestrians walking towards you. The correct answer is D. Pedestrians walking towards you. Explanation. Pedestrians walking on a road with no pavement should walk against the direction of the traffic. You can't see around this bend. There may be hidden dangers. Always keep this in mind and give yourself time to react if a hazard does appear. Question 75. Ahead of you, traffic in the left-hand lane is slowing. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Accelerate, pass the vehicles in the left-hand lane. B. Move across and continue in the right-hand lane. C. Pull up on the left-hand verge. D. Slow down, keeping a safe separation distance. The correct answer is D. Slow down, keeping a safe separation distance. Explanation. Allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. Leave enough room so that you can maintain a safe separation distance, even if vehicles pull in ahead of you. Question 76. In what way are provisional car license holders restricted? Give one answer. A. 
They can't carry passengers in the rear seats. B. They can't drive at more than 40 miles per hour. C. They can't drive between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. D. They can't drive unaccompanied. The correct answer is D, they can't drive unaccompanied. Explanation, when driving a motor car, a learner driver who holds a provisional driving license must, display red L plates, or D plates in Wales, to the front and rear of the vehicle, be insured to drive the vehicle, be accompanied by someone who's at least 21 years old and who has held for at least three years, and still holds, a full license for the category of vehicle being driven. Question 77. In which circumstances may you use hazard warning lights, give one answer. A. When driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind of a hazard ahead. B. When warning oncoming traffic that you intend to stop. C. When you're double parked on a two-way road. D. When your direction indicators aren't working. The correct answer is A. When driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind of a hazard ahead. Explanation. Hazard warning lights are an important safety feature. Use them when driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind you of danger ahead. You should also use them if your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Question 78. You're waiting to emerge at a junction. Your view is restricted by parked vehicles. What can help you to see traffic on the road you're joining? Give one answer. A. Checking for traffic in your interior mirror. B. Looking for traffic behind you. C. Making eye contact with other road users. D. Reflections of traffic in shop windows. The correct answer is D. Reflections of traffic in shop windows. Explanation. You must be completely sure it's safe to emerge. Try to look for traffic through the windows of the parked cars or in the reflections in shop windows. Keep looking in all directions as you slowly edge forwards until you can see it's safe. Question 79. After passing your driving test, you suffer from ill health. This affects your driving. What must you do? Give one answer. A. Always drive accompanied. B. Avoid using motorways. C. Inform the licensing authority. D. Inform your local police. The correct answer is C. Inform the licensing authority. Explanation. You must tell, DVLA, or DVA, in Northern Ireland if your health is likely to affect your ability to drive. The licensing authority will investigate your situation and then make a decision on whether or not to take away your license. Question 80. Why should the junction on the left be kept clear? Give one answer. A. To allow the bus to reverse. B. To allow vehicles to enter and emerge. C. To allow vehicles to make a U-turn. D. To allow vehicles to park. The correct answer is B. To allow vehicles to enter and emerge. Explanation. You should always try to keep junctions clear. If you're in queuing traffic, make sure that when you stop you leave enough space for traffic to flow into and out of the junction. Question 81. Your motorway journey is boring and you feel drowsy. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. B. Slow down and let other drivers overtake. C. Speed up to arrive at your destination sooner. D. Stop on the hard shoulder for a sleep. The correct answer is A. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. Explanation. Never stop on the hard shoulder to rest. If there's no service area for several miles, leave the motorway at the next exit and find somewhere safe and legal to pull over.
please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you for watching and good luck for your test.